In this video, we're going to learn how to write a C program to count the number of occurrences of a character in a string using recursion. So first we'll create a test string. We'll have here car test is equal to, and then we'll have some characters in the string. And we want our function to be able to count the number of occurrences of some character. So for example, we might want the function to count the occurrences of the character lowercase a and the character lowercase a occurs twice in this string. So in that case, we would expect the function to return 2. The function itself is going to look like this. We'll have int count occurrences, and then car star string, and car c. So the function is called count occurrences, and it's going to accept a string and a character as an argument, and it's going to return an int value and the int value that it returns is going to be the number of times that this character occurs in this string. So we'll copy this, and then down here, we'll provide a definition of the function. Now we're going to use recursion to solve this problem, where recursion is when we have a function that calls itself to solve a problem. Before we do that, it's important we understand how strings are stored in C. So this string here is a sequence of characters that's stored in this car array here, test. Now we have this parameter here, car star string. That is what's called a pointer. A pointer is a variable that stores a memory address. So if we call this function up here and we have count occurrences and we pass it test and let's say lowercase a as the character to count in the string. So here, when we pass test to this function, what gets passed to the function is not the entire string. What gets passed to the function is the memory address of the first character in this string. That's what string is going to be set to, is the memory address of that first character. Now we can access the characters in the string using array indexing. So we could have here string at the index zero, and that would give us access to the first character in the string. We can also use this syntax here. If I say star string, star here is what's called the dereference operator. It's going to give us back the character that's stored at the memory address that string stores. So because string initially stores this memory address here of this character, star string would give us back that character, capital S. Now there's another operation we can use to get the memory address of the next character in the string. String plus one, will give us back the memory address of the next character in the string. So if string was initially storing the memory address of this character here, string plus one would give us back the memory address of this character here. We can use these two operations to build our recursive function. So if we call the function with string plus one as the string argument, what we're passing in is the memory address of the next character in the string. Now, if we were to keep on calling the function like this, we could use star string to look at each character in the string. So if star string is equal to the special null terminator character that signifies the end of a string, we would want the recursion to stop at that point. We would want to stop calling the function. So here we'll have return zero, if this is true. So this special null terminator character is at the end of every string. So after this period character here, the next character is the special null terminator character. If we encounter that character, we've reached the end of the string and we're going to return zero in that case. This will also work if our string is empty. So if all our string has is the null terminator character, it's effectively an empty string with no actual content. In that case, there's going to be no occurrences of this character here, and we would actually want to return zero. So this case here is also going to work if the string happens to be empty. Now we call this the base step because at this step here in the algorithm, the function is going to stop calling itself. Next we'll make the recursive step, and in the recursive step, the function is going to call itself. So here we'll have else if star string is equal to C. So if the character that we're currently looking at in the string 
is equal to the character that we're trying to count the occurrences of. In this case, we're going to return one plus count occurrences for the remainder of the string as given by string plus one here. So if the character has occurred at this position in the string, we have one more occurrence. So we're going to return one plus however many occurrences there are in the remainder of the string. Otherwise, if we didn't find another occurrence of the character, we're just going to return count occurrences called with string plus one. In other words, the number of occurrences of the character in the remainder of the string. So this completes the recursive step of our solution and our function is now done. So now up here in our main function, we can output the value returned when the function is called. We could have here printf a count colon percent d backslash n, and we're going to output the return value of this call to count occurrences. So we can save, compile, and run our program. And we do get that the character lowercase a occurs in our string two times, which is correct. And each time we encounter the character we're looking for, we return one plus the number of occurrences of the character in the remainder of the string. We eventually will reach the special null terminator character that signifies the end of the string. And at that point, we're going to return zero to stop the recursion. As each function call returns, the addition operation will add up each occurrence of the character, which will give us the total occurrences of the character in the string. So this is how we can find the number of occurrences of a character in a string using recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.